Ciao. Learned writing a book about pop culture hits and entertainment is that stories are weapons, for good or ill. Movies like Frozen can teach. Just, you know, talking about talking the place, talking about the thing. Yeah, maybe talking to people, although I'm really weird about that. Yeah. Especially because you have to get closer than six feet. <clears throat> if you're going to, you know, Psych- get the microphone. The psychology is interesting, yeah. In their face, yeah. Allison Sheridan is here with us, everybody. Allison Sheridan, she is the host of uh, Nocilla Cast podcast. Uh, she's got about nine other shows she does, about four and a half of which are with Bart Bashat, who you heard about earlier this week. Uh, you can follow what she does and and all at uh, Podfeet. So that is either podfeet.com is the website or at Podfeet on Twitter. You know, I think this might be my favorite time of the week. We're getting towards yeah. the end of it now. Yeah, we're getting towards the end of the week. And uh, usually, you know, sometimes on this, this is like a, ooh, a hard tech topic that we're talking about on this uh, on this episode. And uh, other times it's not, or on this show, rather. Other times it's not. I, all right, let me back up. I have had sponsors on this show before. Generally speaking, when I talk about something on this show, I am not talking about them because they have sponsored anything I do. I, like a lot of times I'll say, I have a great mobile carrier on this show. I don't mention the mobile carrier by name because they were an advertiser someplace else and this is not, I'm not talking about anything here because I'm being paid to talk about it. If I talk about something that I'm being paid to talk about, I will say, first a word from XYZ. I wrote to you last night and said, I want to talk about great stories. And part of that is born of the fact that um, Tim Cook, when he made Apple TV Plus, or when he announced Apple TV Plus, his tagline was, great stories can change the world. I have been listening to the Business Movers podcast, uh, season five, uh, The Enlightenment of Steve Jobs. And I will be honest, I've been listening to it because they advertised on Mac OS Ken. And at first I listened to like 10 minutes, enough to know, like, you know, kind of what they were doing, kind of what their spiel was. And then I kind of, I felt like I should listen to a tiny bit more because I didn't know everything that they were talking about. And I have since, I mean, I I don't want to say binged because it's only four episodes, but I've since binged the whole thing. I listened to the rest of it. I listened to all of it probably in like two days, maybe. Wow. Because. That counts as binging. Well, I guess. But I mean, you're you're talking about three hours, maybe, because they're only 45 minutes each. And, you know, there are ads that I skipped. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I know, because there's the dirty secret about ads and people who uh, make a living from them, on them, with them, what have you. What I loved about it was it was a story. And, and and I'm given to understand that this is the business movers thing. They tell, you know, whatever story they're going to tell as a story. Um, there's a little bit of production to it. There's a little bit of voice work. But it's like one guy, Lindsey Graham, not that one. It's one guy, Lindsey Graham, basically reading all the different voices and changing them a tiny bit. But like when he was doing the Johnny Ive part, he didn't even try to do an English accent because he knows that he can't. And so he's just like, you know, just changes his voice a little bit. So, you know, okay, we're talking to two different people. Now it's Steve Jobs talking to Johnny Ivan back and forth. And what's interesting is when we got to the last episode, that was like right in the middle of all the stuff that I've been talking about on Mac OS Ken for the past 15 years. So it's when Steve Jobs sold Pixar. It's when it's when um, uh, they invented the iPhone. It's when they invented the iPad. Uh, actually going through, well... The iPod was before me as far as paying attention daily to Apple News. And what's weird is I found myself getting like emotional listening to the last episode because they're also talking about, you know, his pancreatic cancer and his liver transplant and the fact that the uh, cancer had spread and all that stuff. None of it's maudlin, but there was just something there was just something about the story presentation. There was just something about the way that it was presented that got me thinking about a conversation that you and I had a couple of weeks ago about, about, you know, good stories, bad stories, happy stories, sad stories, the whole thing. And I don't know where I'm going with this, except that I don't know if it's a getting older thing or what, but I am more and more a believer in the power of story. And I know that probably means I should go read some Joseph Campbell and I haven't yet. And I promise it's on my list, but I don't know why I wanted to bring this here even, which makes this a horrible story, <laughs> but 
But I, th- I think I, I think I know where, what you're talking about, and I, I want to put it in context of uh, my reading style. Um, I I read all the time. I've always read constantly. I read shorter and shorter and shorter bits now because I fall asleep really easily. I don't mm. know, old, yeah. but uh, <laughs> always always have loved to read. But uh, uh, during the pandemic, I have not read a book that I couldn't put down. I haven't read a book that kept me awake that I could not uh, the the literal oh, page turner that I okay. had to keep going. Yeah, um, I, I'm hoping that comes back for me. I don't know if I just happened to read 15 books that were not my book, but it made me think about um, a book that was not the ending of the story wasn't important. It was it was definitely the journey that was an important story, and it's a book called A Gentleman in Moscow. Have you mm-hmm. heard of that? I believe you told me about it. You, that might have actually come oh, shoot. up on. Did I already uh, talk about it on this show? Well, it's fine. It, it, remind me because I'm not sure. I think it might have come up on Wheel of Stuff, but I'm not 100. percent Okay, so it's a, it's a story of a guy, and I'm going to mess up the history exactly. But in in Russia after the Bolshevik Revolution, and he was of the uh, he was a um, a count, I think, mm-hmm. and he he ends up in some situation in the first couple of pages of the book where he they tell him we're either going to shoot you now or you have to live the rest of your life in this hotel Mm -hmm. and obviously he chooses to live in the hotel instead and it's a story that spans like 20 30 years of him living in this hotel and the 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 people that move in and out of the hotel and he ends up with a love life and and there's wonderful wonderful characters in it but what made it the the good story what you're talking about about a story that's got goodness in it is he lives with grace the entire time Hmm. I mean, he's he was a count for crying out loud. And he ends up in this in this little tiny apartment up in the top of this hotel. And, you know, things things are not good. It's not a good way to live. But he right. makes it good by his his personal grace of the way he approaches things and his uh, humility. And, and it's it just a it's a book that makes you feel really good the whole time you're reading it. And it's not it, it does have an ending, but uh, but it doesn't. You know, it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on because it's all in the same place. You know, it's not like there's huge changes going on in the world or in his world. But it's a wonderful story. It just it just makes you feel really good to read it. How long do you think you have to wait before you spoil the end of a book for somebody? No, (laughs) let me never mind. I'll I'll tell you what I'll do. I won't. No, We know the answer. What? And and, and it, it affected you. Oh, because so Steve was reading Dune. When, is yeah, that, is that the one? Just hap- my husband, Steve, just happened to be reading Dune when <laughs> Ken and John mentioned something very spoilery about it on... on uh, yeah. uh, uh, mission Log. Mission Log. Yeah. And, and Steve, just as a joke, wrote to them and said, spoiler, geez, and how old is the book? Right? Like, I, I, 60 I was years like 60 old or years something. old, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember when the price of Dune went back up because they were putting all the 50th anniversary editions. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he That's was joking. By the no, way, I, well, they, no, it's, they kept feeling bad about it. <laughs> well, I do feel terrible about it because that's a wonderful book, and like it was easier <laughs> to go in not knowing stuff about Dune back in the day because I didn't know anybody who'd read it yet. <laughs> right. So I won't name the book. I will say that there was a book that I was reading that was like this weird sort of love story, and they were a troubled couple, and then you find out. <sighs> I don't know, 50 pages, 60 pages before the end of the book that they've died in a car accident. Ah. Uh. But then, because it's a novel, he jumps to a different part in time and tells about how happy they were a couple of days before they died. And it ends beautifully. And the thing is, like, you know they've died, but it ends beautifully because you get to share, like, this wonderful moment that happens with them. It's kind of like you're talking about with that book. It's not, it's not how it ends but how it how it goes in a way there's a the the tv show this is us does the same thing there's there's 30 years ago 20 years ago 10 years ago 10 years in the future five years in the future just all intermixed mm-hmm. and it, it's hard to get used to it at the beginning because you're like wait what how, how come they just got younger why is that person alive they're dead what? i thought he and, was and, dead and, right exactly and, but then, and they also show you a future where somebody's dead 
And you're like, oh, my God. So you spend the next two years waiting to find out how what horrible things going to happen, how they're going to die. But then it's OK because they're back later because they're going to show you the past again. It's a it's a real interesting way to do it. It's like Pulp Fiction, the series. <laughs> So, so I have one other question. Um, have, so I, because you and I were having a conversation um, off mic last time you were on, actually, about <sighs> Apple keeps introducing sort of dystopian uh, futures, it seems. You get Ted Lasso, which is great. You get Mythic Quest, which is a bunch of screwed up people, but I mean, you know, with their hearts in the right place. Heart, yeah. But if we go like, you know, if we go like, you know, into the future or the alternative future where it's like, oh, the Russians beat us to space. Well, that's Ronald D. Moore. So, OK, fine. Uh, see, uh, you know, everybody nearly died from a thing and nobody can see because there was a plague. And then uh, they just keep sort of introducing like like futures that don't seem that great. And so I found myself wondering about the whole uh, about the whole, uh, you know, great stories thing. And then and then you challenged me and like, well, name a book that does that. I'm like, well, I can't. But then I bought you one. It was um, it's uh, Calculating God by Robert J. Sawyer. Uh, I have a question. Have you read it yet? I have not because I'm in the middle of another book. Have you read it now? (laughs) Still no. (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, maybe I'll ask again tomorrow.